This is possibly the first video in a new series where I'll be evaluating polarizing characters in the Naruto community. It's fitting that Hiruzen is the first character I view since most people give him a god of shinobi status and others are pretty quiet about him. He's a character that's very difficult to pin down since everyone says that we've never seen him fight at full strength. He's got a lot of ambiguous feats and statements as well, so that just makes him even harder to decipher. The point in this video is not to hype him up or downplay him though. It's simply just a matter of figuring out how powerful he actually is and giving him a range where I lowball him and highball him. I'm gonna start off by laying down all the facts about him and then synthesizing them into an opinion on how strong he really is. Once again, I'm not trying to hate or praise the character in this video, and I'm instead just trying to figure out what his true strength is, since it's so ambiguous. So let's start off with the facts. In Tobirama's final mission, we see here is an offer to be the decoy, and he even says that he considers himself to be the most accomplished out of Donzo and several other notable shinobi, and possibly even Tobirama. If we hide Balamir, he's talking about Tobirama as well, which means that before he became Okage, he, he considered himself stronger than Tobirama. If we lowball him, he's only talking about all the other younger shinobi on the mission. Fast forward to Obito's Nine Tails attack, and we see his first on screen fight in his mid to late 50s. It should be noted that Jiraiya is roughly the sage during part 2. We see Hiruzen push the Nine Tails out of the village with the monkey sick, while Minato deals with Obito. Once Minato is done, we see Hiruzen collapse from exhaustion and complain that Kuromo is charging up another Biju bomb. In this moment, he has no clear counterplay, and Minato has to teleport Kuromo away to save everyone. Fast forwarding again to the tuning exams, and we see his final fight at about age 70. AJ caught up to him, and it's remarked several times that he's not in his prime anymore. He's having to fight both of his teachers and his student at the same time. In the anime, it mentally affects him, but in the manga, he never shows signs of holding back. Both the anime and manga have him eventually being especially motivated at the end of the fight, though. In this fight, we see Hiruzen use fire style and earth style to block Tobirama's water style. He's able to smell out the reanimations in the darkness genjutsu, and then seal them using the reaper death seal. After that, he easily disarms Orochimaru's Kusanagi blade, and then seals his arms away. In terms of statements, Iruka says that Hiruzen was the strongest Okage, and Orochimaru says that he knew and could perform all existing Konoha jutsus. And during the Sanin showdown arc, Kabuto says that Hiruzen was the strongest of the five Kage. Finally, fast forwarding to the war arc, and we see him reanimated. We see him do very well with destroying god tree branches, and he does better than Tobirama as well. After that, we see Guru Guru on the verge of destroying what's left of the Shinobi Alliance in Four Kage before Hiruz encounters all five chakra natures with his own five chakra natures. I'd just like to point out here that for some reason he just copies the chakra nature instead of using his counter. He uses fire against fire style instead of using water, and I've always found this to be weird. So how strong is Hiruzen really then? First I'll go through all the feats and statements I just read out and I'll give my opinion on what they really mean. I'm surprised that people don't bring up Hiruzen calling himself the best in front of Tobirama in his last mission. I don't think this automatically puts him in front of Tobirama though. If he meant it, he could be wrong, kinda like how Orochimaru got bodied by Itachi when he underestimated him. It is also possible that he was referring to the others his age and didn't think that Tobirama was an option for being the decoy. Either way, I think the statement is interesting, but there's just too many questions that are unanswered to give it merits. Next is his actions during the Nine Tails attack, and I think he's in his prime here. He's Jiraiya's age during part two during this, and he never brings up his age during the attack. Jiraiya also never complained about his age either. So with that said, I think we do know a little bit about who Prime here is and really is, but it's a small sample size. The monkey sick was strong enough to push Kuroma out of the village, but this took out a lot out of Hiruzen. In fact, Minato had to save him from a tailed beast bomb and then seal him. There's an interesting moment where Kuroma starts charging up a bijou bomb, and Hiruzen complains that he's doing that again. Kuroma did fire one at Minato earlier, but I heavily lean towards this meaning that Hiruzen was the one doing something to nullify the tailed beast bombs. He could use his monkey sick to mess up the trajectory in this scenario, but... It seems like there's a limit to it, and he doesn't have the ability to defeat the Nine Tails. Had Minuto not been there, he would have been annihilated. Next up is his final fight, and there's a lot to unpack here. I'm going to save his statements about his power levels in relation with the other Akage and current Kage for more towards the end of the video. As for Orochimaru saying that he can perform every Jutsu in the Leaf, I think this was, should be taken with a huge grain of salt. We've heard how Kakashi has copied a thousand Jutsu, but he only uses like ten. Orochimaru's primary goal is learning every jutsu, yet all he ever does is regurgitate and do snake things. The list can go on, but I don't think there's much weight to this statement. Perhaps he does know all the leaf jutsu, and he's just not proficient enough to use it in battle. 
That's why he's called the professor. Maybe he could teach you every jutsu, but he couldn't perform it at a high level. Think of how a lot of the best sports coaches weren't the best players. They can do anything their player can do, but not at the professional level. As for the mental blocks he had while fighting his teachers and students, that was never really shown in the manga. For this channel, I go by the manga for almost everything since that's Kishimoto's interpretation. Either way, the circumstances ended up amping him. Once he seals his teachers, he sees Orochimaru use sound shinobi as vessels, and this disgusts him. After that, we see him disarm Orochimaru with ease and then catch him in the Reaper Dust seal. Hirsen's will of fire is part of his character, so this is just standard, really. As for the Warwick, his moment with Guru Guru's Buddha statue is so misinterpreted it's not even funny. The scale of his nature transformations is quite impressive in this moment, but this does not mean that he's stronger than the five Kage minus Gara and the Shinobi Alliance. The four Kage here say that they're out of chakra, and Shikamaru says that that's the case for everyone else as well. He managed to stop the Buddha statue on one occasion, but who ended up defeating it? Orochimaru and Taka defeated the Buddha statue and Guru Guru in one exchange. Karin's chains did most of the work, but that's not really the point here. The point is, do you think Orochimaru and Taka are stronger than the five Kage minus Gara and some of the Shinobi Alliance? If you don't, then don't say that Hiruzen is either. Hiruzen showed off some impressive scale to his jutsu, but he didn't even defeat Guru Guru and he only saved the Shinobi Alliance because they were literally out of chakra. I'll go ahead and talk about some of his lore now. Aruka says that he was the strongest Okage, but by the time he was a ninja, the other three Okage were dead already. So I don't think he has the best perspective here, and feats don't really line up either. The data book does say that he had more talent than Tobirama, but talent doesn't mean better. Sasuke is way more talented than Naruto, but they're relative in power for a good bit of the series. As for Kabuto saying he's the strongest of the five Kage, that could be a retcon. The Kage summit was 300 or so chapters away at this point. So I don't think Kishimoto had put much thought into the five Kage at that point. It's similar to how Hiruzen was supposed to be the strongest Okage, but that was definitely a retcon. Despite that, I think there are legitimate arguments for him being the strongest, or at least close to the strongest of the five Kage. Even his age debuff could be considered a retcon, considering Onoki never had stamina problems because of it. I think his age catching up with him was just a plot element. Orochimaru was the immortal and Hiruzen defeated him despite his mortality holding him back. That's why his age was so important, whereas Onoki's only problem was with his bad back. I think it's fair to say the strongest Kage statement is a retcon if Hashirama and Tobirama's power levels were retconned as well. They're both cases of a lot of time passing and the lore being adjusted to match the plot. When it comes to retconning, we should be consistent instead of being convenient. After everything I've laid down up to this point, I, th I think it's time to talk about what a god of shinobi really is. Hiruzen failed to stop the Nine Tails, while a true god of shinobi can easily defeat it. Madara was able to control it and wrap his Susanoo around it, and of course Hashirama could defeat it, whereas Hiruzen could not. So is it really fair to call Hiruzen a god of shinobi? If he is, then there are many others who also deserve that title, but don't get it. We shouldn't throw the term around so loosely or it'll end up losing its meaning. I don't think Hiruzen is deserving of the same title Hashirama and Madara hold, and if you look at those three before me against the Ninetales, you should understand why. I'll finish this video by actually scaling Hiruzen by comparing them to the Akatsuki, the Okage, and the Five Kage. But first I'd like to clarify this isn't a biased hate video. I've been lowballing Hiruzen mostly, but this is because so many have highballed him so hard that I'm just kind of bringing it back to reality. I also try to be as unbiased as possible when power scaling, and I think I do pretty well at it. I don't hate Hiruzen, and in fact I like his character arc. The two videos I'm showing on the screen right now show how much I like Hiruzen. I'm just giving him a fair shake like I do with every other character. I'll go ahead and do some general scaling to show where I actually think Hiruzen sits in the pecking order. His monkey stick is very overlooked by everyone. It could bully the Ninetales, and he managed to disarm Orochimaru as well. It also did fantastic against the God Tree. The only weapons I see possibly being better are Sami Hada and Madara's guitar shaped weapon. The scale and versatility of his basic nature transformations are also impressive, but kind of make him a Swiss army knife instead of a machete. Sometimes it's better to put all your stock in one or two nature transformations, and sometimes it's not. His close quarters combat was better than Orochimaru's, and all signs point to him being a step above the Sani in his glory days. We know Orochimaru was easily defeated by Itachi, who is one of the strongest Akatsuki members, while Orochimaru is somewhere in the middle. So that gives Hiruzen a floor of being in the middle of the Akatsuki pecking order. As for the five Kage, Kabuto did say he was the strongest, but 
I'm not convinced because of Onoki. Onoki would do much better against Kurama than Hiruzen. His particle style can stop tailed beast bombs and straight up kill Kurama as well. Onoki could also carry the Turtle Island, which made the eight tails look small. So this means that Onoki could also pick up Kurama and move him much easier than Hiruzen could. If you stack up their feats together, I don't think you can easily say Hiruzen is better. If you want to be generous here, we can say they're relative to each other. As for the Okage, he's definitely stronger than Tsunade. I can't speak for Okage Kakashi because Boruto and Naruto shouldn't be scaled together, but he's also definitely stronger than War Kakashi. As I explained earlier, he's not stronger than Hashirama and he's not stronger than Naruto either, for obvious reasons. What about Minato and Tobirama? Tobirama was, was of way more use in the war and did way better against Jubito than Hiruzen. His flying rising was critical along with his strategies. As for Minato, Hiruzen doesn't really compare. Minato was the one who stopped the Nine Tails after easily defeating Obito. The strongest person we know Minato is better than is Obito, whereas for Hiruzen it's just the Sanin. Minato also showed he was way better than A in his interaction, and I don't see Hiruzen outclassing A in the same way that Minato did. The point I'm trying to make here is that Minato showing he's better than Obito in A is far more impressive than Hiruzen showing that he's better than the Sanim. So with that said, that leaves Hiruzen in the 4-5 to five range along with Tobirama. These two are really close, so I'm not going to definitively say who's better in this video. Hiruzen's more straightforward with a narrow gap between his floor and ceiling, whereas Tobirama has a wide gap considering his speed and flying rising. With all this being said, I can give Hiruzen a range for where he falls among the three groups I compared him to. If we lowball him, he's the second strongest of the five Kage, but if we highball him, he's the strongest. If we lowball him, he's the fifth strongest Hokage, but if we highball him, he's the fourth strongest. If we lowball him, we can rank him in the middle of the Akatsuki, but if we highball him, he approaches the top of it. I do think that Prime Hiruzen is scalable if you really dive into it, and I also think he's not a god of shinobi. A lot of his lore is retconned, and if you actually look at what he's capable of, it doesn't really make sense either. I'm pretty confident in how I've scaled him in this video, and I think that he definitely falls in the ranges I've set as well. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Comment something if you have something to say, and thank y'all for watching, I guess I'll see y'all next time.